Gavin's indoor studio here uh, in Nace Golf Club. Uh, that time of the year where uh, we're going to start looking at um, things to work on during the winter. So if you're anything like me, normally you wait until you know next year, really just before the season, and think, you know, what am I going to work on this year? So this year for me has been uh, a bit of a, a challenging year for a number of reasons. So um, got down to nine late last year. Um, this year have struggled to play as much as I need to for family reasons of young kids and, and just work and stuff like that generally. So scoring rounds I've played, I think I looked at it last night, I've only played about 13, 14 rounds of actual scoring golf. Um, we've changed a number of things, I've changed the putter this year which has been a big plus. Um, so had a, a pin putter fitting done with uh, the guys here in Nace uh, and that's been a big success. I've changed the driver so I've moved away from my SLVR to the, the ping driver and we've done a video on that as well and again the driver still isn't the strongest club in the bag but that's the, the, the swing more over than you know the actual club itself. Um, the biggest challenge for me this year has been playing to that nine handicaps and to be honest I, I would have struggled this year to play to 13, 14. Um, now it's been the, I would class my year as, you know, the sublime and the ridiculous. Um, when I've played well, I've gotten to handicap, um, you know, I've shot a couple of rounds of, of 35, 36 points. Haven't been caught anything, but got a number of point runs back. Um, so I think I started the year at 8.2 uh, and it's now back out to 9 even, I think is what well it's so okay. number of point ones back mm -hmm. and had a couple where it, where it held round. Um, so yeah, kind of a frustrating year from that perspective because it's felt like it's been really close on, on a number of occasions and uh, just a couple of bits have let me down. I think the biggest challenge or the biggest struggle for me has actually been off the tee generally. I'm just trying to keep the ball in play mm -hmm. continuously. Um, I've been working with, with Gavin for a, a number of months now and we've been working on a couple of different parts of the game in relation to particularly width in the swing um, and that's something that I'm, I'm continuing to, to kind of try and um, apply to, to my game. Um, so yeah really we're just going to go through and this is fairly typical for you Gavin with, with a new client is it? In relation yeah to well I suppose what we want to try and do is get at some, some kind of a plan over the next four to six months before yeah. the season starts next year. Yeah. Um, most important thing for us to establish is exactly where do you want to be at the end of the next summer. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously we all want to hit the ball better all the time, sure. but what's what's the tangible goal? Where do we want to be handicap wise, um, even in terms of uh, on course success? Is yeah. there something in particular you want to do well in? Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk through a little bit about that. Okay, so your handicap at the moment, is 9.0 yep and where would we like it to be so ideally next year? I, I would like to get to six that was kind of a number i had in my head uh for this season i think one of the real um the things that's become really apparent to me is when you get to that low you know that single digit it becomes a lot harder or it feels a lot harder mm -hmm. to actually shift that handicap further you know because you don't have as many opportunities to Mm. to claw something back. So I think one of the issues for me this year is if I have a couple of bad holes to start off, in my mind the round is, is mm. gone. So I, I, I do think I need to shift my kind of mental approach to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to be able to say, right, you know, that there's still an opportunity to, to score here or to, to claw this back or to, you know, at least get into that kind of buffer zone of, of maintaining that mm. handicap and not giving anything away. Well, I think when, when you talk about the mental approach, I think that's a really important point because regardless of whatever standard you play to, uh, regardless of whether you um, are playing consistently well or not, you have to take a consistent mental approach to, the, to your game. Yeah. So your mental approach should be the first thing you try to get on top of. And that, that means that you take a certain approach to your game yeah. all the time. And is, and is there an element of chicken and egg in that? So you're playing well, your confidence goes up, your approach generally changes. No, no I think your, your mental approach should be something that you, it should be a set of routines 
um, that you apply every time you play golf. Okay. And whether you're playing well or badly, you continue to apply the same approach. Yeah. Yes, you will have contingencies. So if things aren't going well or you feel a bit technically out of sorts, mm. that you have a backup plan that you can go to. Okay. But it is really important to understand the mental approach if you want if you want to get the best out of whatever you have on the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, okay. there will be days where you feel you're hitting it well enough to shoot a very good score. Yeah. There will be days where you don't feel that's the case and so you have to grind it out a little bit more. Yeah, and in that scenario, I think it is important that your your approach mentally Mm. is consistent okay. and, we, and that we try to arrive at, the, at that point first yeah because no matter how much we improve your technique no matter how much your shots or your ability to hit shots improve it, you're never going to realize that potential unless you understand the, how to apply the correct mental approach yeah so it's a prerequisite for getting better okay. you have to understand it and you have to be able to apply it okay. and hitting good shots as we all know is not enough. Yeah. In terms of technical weaknesses then, I mean, there are parts of the game that you feel need work. A, a bugbear of my swing has always been the, the position at the top. Um, and whether I, you know, make too much of a, an issue out of that myself, because there are obviously a lot of players that play from that kind of position. But in my head, I feel that because I'm across the line, I'm having to correct too many more bits in the in the swing to um to compensate for that position at the top but it's just something I, I i just struggle with i don't know where the swing is going wrong to get into that position like what is it i need to, to change so you know again and, and we're going to do some before and afters on this as well in relation to you know if that's something we decide you know needs to be a focal point and again you know i'll, I'll take your advice on on if that's the correct approach or not um, because is it a case that that position at the top is because of a takeaway or is it because of a grip or is it because it's it, I need to understand the mechanics of how I'm ending up in that position I think it's a valid point because everybody's different some people when they get the answers to certain questions park it and move on yeah and, and maybe stop dwelling on yeah, certain yeah. things that they think may or may not be right, right. It's not right to say to everybody, um, forget about your technique, let's mm. just do mental work and yeah. that will improve you. I, I think, yes, I would always say you need to understand the mental game and how to take the correct mental approach to playing golf yeah. with a view to scoring and shooting better scores. But there, if there's lingering doubts or questions, they mm. need to be tackled. Yeah. So I'm not going to, you know, Dismiss it, dismiss it dismiss or yeah, disregard yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll factor that into our program and okay. how we, how and when we deal with it. Yeah. One thing I don't want to ever lose sight of is that goal, that goal there. Six? Yeah. And are we doing things that are getting us closer to that goal, or are we doing things that are maybe irrelevant and yeah. moving further away or wasting time? Yeah. So, so the driving we'll take a look at. You've mentioned the the fact that you're across the line and and, and shut. Yeah. And I will take a look at that. So if I were to just go back to the question, which was barriers yeah. to practice. Yeah. One would be family life. Okay. Work. Work. Time. So what would be a realistic amount of time for you to find so I, I can I can happily put a couple of hours into this you know on a weekly basis okay. and and if that is you know an hour at a range mm. or you know nine holes mm. or X amount of time with a net or on camera or whatever that needs to be that's fine you know people do it every day of the week you know whether it's a gym or whatever mm. their, their kind of passion yeah, hobby is. Want to do something yeah and that, that's fine exactly yeah. you know the advantage of having some of this stuff at home is the kids are in bed mm. you can get out the back you can spend half an hour and you can do some some tangible stuff, or you can head off the yeah. range, and you can do some some tangible sure. stuff. But it is that, you know, it's not going to the range and thinking, you know, here's a bucket of ball, bum 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 bum. What did I, mm. what did I actually do? Mm. I would prefer to hit ten or fifteen, you know, good shots, or or you know, to be able to look at it afterwards and say, yeah, that's all bang on, rather than hit a bucket of whatever and, and not have a clue what you've actually achieved. 
Okay, so I mean, it's barriers to effective practice, but it's practice. It's practice effectively. I think effectively, is, yeah. Means knowing what to practice. Yeah, and and knowing what's 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 right. So particularly when it comes to working on those those technical things, you know, if there's a a certain position or a hinge or a you know, I'm getting I'm talking about the, the kind mm. of the technical bits that you're doing that movement in such a way that it's helping ingrain mm, mm, that mm. into you know, so it becomes like a an autopilot type thing. So yeah. I, I don't want to have to stand on a, a tee box on a certainly more and think mm. right here, there, you know, yeah, yeah. that should be time yeah. to play golf. And, but and I think that comes back to your mental approach yeah. as well, doesn't it? It yeah. gets back to understanding what mental approach to take when yes. you stand on the first tee box and to carry that out over the entire round. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna touch a little bit on that. Yeah. Um, initially, for sure. Okay. Um, because I do think, and, and I have to kind of take in everything that you're saying. Yeah. Um, but I would say yes. There's some technical questions that you need answered answered in order to park them. Yeah. And move forward. Yeah, exactly. The exactly. second point would be you need <coughs> to find out why you're not striking the ball as well as you'd like or why the ball's going left or right. Yeah. And to be very clear, concise yeah. on, on what that is and yeah. how we're going to tackle it. That, to me, would be a, a long... That, 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 to me, is the slower burn. Okay. So that's not going to... Once we establish it, it won't change yeah, yeah. until we get it right. Yes. And that can take time. Okay. Sometimes just doing one thing better can, can lead yeah, to an awful lot. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Yeah. The, the, the third thing I would say is I think committing to a certain amount of time every week. So if you said I can find three 30-minute sessions yeah. Yeah. a week to put into, into my practice, then I think that would be a good starting point. Yeah. And just to make sure that you're clocking in yeah, those that half hour. So you being accountable for it. Yeah, well, maybe if, if if we come to an arrangement where you will say to me, you know, Monday night, 7.30, 30 minute session done. Yeah. This is what you did. It yeah. can be whether it's at home or at the driving range or you get to the golf course early in the day or whatever. Um, I think some commitment to yeah, that time I, is important. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I recognize that, you know, you have to take ownership for that as well. Mm. It's the same as, as you know, anything, if, if you're doing a weight loss course or whatever it might be, um, you know, you commit to it mm. and the, the end result is X. Yeah. Yeah. So th this is something that, yeah, I'm absolutely committed to doing. Um, you know, myself and Gavin, we've already agreed that over the next kind of four, six, eight weeks, we're going mm. to, you know, revisit this. Um, we're going to use the technology that Gavin has on hand, as well as the, you know, facilities out in the course here as well, to um, to just, you know, show that the, that the process is something of this. And I also um, appreciate that four, six, eight, twelve weeks, you know, may not be, uh, you know, there may not be a kind of a, a dead end, like boom, we're done, because you know, no sooner have you got one. Well, one fixed. yeah, I mean, the golf's a Golf's a journey, not a destination. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and, and yeah. No sooner do you do you make some progress, you consciously or subconsciously reset the goals, yes. and the expectations will go up yeah. as you get better. And and that's just the nature of, of sport. Yeah. But uh, no, I think we've 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 a lot there. Um, I think we we'll establish a starting point today. Um, I would like to look at the shots from 100 yards in today. Okay. Um, and and give you some ideas of how to practice them more effectively. Right. Um, it sounds to me like it's distance control. That seems to be the main yeah, problem. Sure I'll prove um, wrong. Well, I hope you do because that means <laughs> yeah. your distance is okay. But yeah. uh, no, I think if it's if if it's a distance control thing, then then let's get to grips with that first of all. Because if we change nothing. Yeah. But you just do that one thing better. Yeah. The next time you play, you're bound to see an improvement yeah. in your scores. So there's an awful lot you've said. Mm. Uh, there's an awful lot of detail and content in that in yeah. what you've said. I want to bring all that down to, it down to two or three things yeah. that, we, that we're doing on a regular basis. Yeah, and I think it's it's a good point. One of the things I'm I'm guilty of is trying to do too much at the same time, mm. you know, so rather than working on one thing until it's right, it's right you know, it'll be six different things mm. and trying to get them all right yeah. at the same time. So yeah, I think, 
just the way my, my mind works is, you know, typically I'm a visual type of person and, you know, we recently did the, the 3D session here, which was mind blowing mm -hmm. because you think your hips are going first, mm -hmm. but they're not, not even close, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's all arms, it's all, mm -hmm. it's all upper body. Um, but that, that, just that visual representation of, oh, okay, mm. you know, it's still miles away from, sure. from where it should be, is, it's hugely powerful. But yeah, I think distilling it down into those kind of couple of key points, and yes, if that evolves or changes over the next, you know, the, 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 the course of, of, you know, this program, um, great. At mm. least we're kind of ticking them off as we go. And yeah. If it goes the other way, if it's that one thing that we continue to kind of nail, fine. You know, but it's still it's still progress in my mind. So yeah. Um, okay. okay. Well, let's get started. Let's get out in the course, cool.